Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I want to do more work on my BBC Micro because I've just, uh, you know, I'm taking a bit more of an interest in it this sort of month. But I want to really get under the hood of this thing because I'm not sure what's been done to it and what hasn't. This is the interface I've added to it, which was that Raspberry Pi, you know, tube interface, and that's awesome. So I really like to play with this more, but I don't really understand it enough. Um, so I'm going to take that out. And this is the sort of MMC card, SD card user port thing. Again, not really sure what it does. There's not many components on that board. So that may well have been from an open source project or something. But I don't know if there's a ROM or something inside that deals with that. So I want to kind of just baseline this system because I bought it, you know, second hand and I just don't know what's going on. And I can tell like it's had something because the back panel here, you know, that's, been, that's been molested a little bit. It's not quite as clean as, as I'd have liked. So I'm just undoing the two screws at the back. I'm just going to do them off camera because a bit more room that way. And I'd like to see exactly what this beep, beep has and hasn't got in it because it's got the Ethernet uh, hole in the back. You know, there's a hole There's a hole where there's stuff that's not fitted and things. I'm not sure what to expect there, if there should be a sticker over it or what. So I've undone the two screws at the back, but maybe there's some more. Ah! Perhaps these screws fix. Surprising I've never opened one of these up before, but to be honest, they just kind of work. They are battle tanks after all. Gorgeous though. I really, I really love the design. It's just such a solid, ridiculously solid design. Someone should make a modern case like that for a computer. So that comes off pretty much like your Atari ST or Amiga or something like that. Pretty standard type panels. So just clear the wire and the power supply. So let's see what we can see. So we've got the power supply there, speaker glued onto the keyboard. And I can see the keyboard itself has a couple of nuts and that's what those other screws underneath must be connected to. Yep. And the user ports are just here. So the user ports are under this section of the keyboard. I'll just turn it over to see there's something. Yeah, there is something, some mods there. So I'm going to try to just take the keyboard out real quick. So bear with me while I just twist it at this weird angle because I can't quite get to those nuts otherwise. So that's the right hand one. Left hand one now. My Terry Folds, my holdy holes. Do, 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 do. Almost there. Just getting this, they've got a serrated washer, so you don't want to lose that. It's a bit of a pain to go and find a serrated washer. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. I shall just pick up that last bolt. Or is it a machine screw? No, it's a bolt. No, it's a machine screw. Right. Good. Keyboard away. Figure out how we unplug that one. Easy enough. And then there's a speaker right here. Good. So we can chuck that aside. Tell you what, that's a lot nicer than those Sinclair <laughs> Spectrum keyboard I was messing with before. So the first thing I can see that is kind of interesting is that we have this thing here called a smart spy, smart SPI chip there. And then next to it though, we have another chip, which is this Hyundai chip, but it's had two legs lifted and there's some wires that are coming across all the way to here. And they're just soldered. Well, one of the wires is soldered to this chip, which is the SP226, which appears to be IC76. And then the other wire is going over here to IC77 that's sold onto a leg of IC77. So it's definitely had a bit of mod modding. And I can just see here, there's a tiniest bit of corrosion on the speaker port down here. So I might clean that up. We don't, while we're here, we might as well just give this a board a jolly good clean. So I'm just looking at these chips. We've got this Hyundai HY62256AL in uh, this position which is IC100 I think 
So IC88 has a chip in it called Smart Spy. So I think that's something to do with that interface. And then next to it in IC52, we have an HN61 3128P. And then the next one, IC51, we have a HN6131 28PB04. So there's definitely some mods here. And it's interesting because some of the chips look shiny and new, some of them look old, and then you've got all of these things. What are all these chip holes here? And it's just amazing. It's amazing the upgradability here. Well, clearly on this side here, that's the two missing ports that you have here. What would we be missing out on? So you've got an Ethernet switch. And here is something that's on the motherboard marked as a reset switch. So we could probably quite easily pop in a reset switch back into that footprint there if we wanted to. Um, oh, but there's another little bodge here. Look, there's a little cap on this component here. On IC29, there's a little cap bodged in there so yeah it's all a bit strange isn't it but I might just, just give it a quick clean while we're here give it a little brushy brush really gentle though because it does work I don't really want to damage anything again there's some funkiness looking underneath one of these jumpers here let's take this jumper pin out yeah it's okay could be where someone's already kind of go clean it really it's strange or it could be some flux something like that good opportunity for me to give it a little bit of flux clean though let's get some flux clean i do have a new bottle of flux clean you'll be pleased to know but i haven't um haven't opened it yet so clearly i'm still on the old old bottle there i just want to get rid of that sort of corrody looking thing there looking good in fact you know what I think I'll do when the weather's a bit better I'm just going to take this whole board off and just flood it and give it a good old wash the only thing I'm looking at the only thing here that oh no crikey did you see that the label on that chip actually the flux clean was washing that off that's insane that's IC7, which is the ERPA ULA 2C1 something. Look, that label just completely wiped off. That would have been uh, very difficult to get hold of, I can imagine. That's the first time I've seen that. That's very odd, isn't it? I wonder if that's kind of a you know a, a low yield custom chip where they just put on the label with just you know some basic technology. Very weird. So done a bit of digging. And what I reckon in this machine, and I can zoom in so you can have a little closer look if you're a bit more expert or you've got a bee that's similar. What I think, I think this is the upper, the OS basically, that's the main, main ROM here. And then this one I think could be basic purely because it says here, look, Acorn Basic. So that's the, the basic ROM, which is great. This is the Smart SPI, Smart Spy uh, MMC interface thing we've got going on here. And this thing, this chip is an SRAM chip. So it's a bit weird. The only thing, I didn't look at the data sheet for it fully, but what it may well be doing is, in a Beeb, I think you've got up to, I don't know, 16 addressable slots or something like of that magnitude, but you've only got five slots, right? So you can have, you can have more, uh, addresses than the slots are provided and then you need to use other things for getting those address lines tweaked and there's some mods where you can put in bigger roms and then you'll twiddle the address line some other way and you can actually access them as four four separate things so i'm kind of thinking that's what it is so imagine it's like you've got a 64k chip but each of these is only 16k so you have to twiddle the address lines to get your extra i think i think don't quote me on that but i think that's what's happening and this way, this could be the uh, mod. So I don't know if SRAM is the same as sideways RAM. And if it is, I don't even know how you enable it. But it does mean here, though, you could add more um, chips. And I think I've got space for one more without some sort of expander card. But it's pretty neat. So I'm going to have to do a lot more archaeology. But I've taken a few still photos now. So at least at some point in the future, I can go and have a look at those photos. But it's quite neat, isn't it? I thought I was almost tempted to take the uh, power supply out to see if it's been recapped or something, but it's one of those things, isn't it? If it just if it works, maybe just leave it alone right now till something breaks. 
So that's that really. Let me see if there's anything else on the keyboard. On the keyboard though, you always had this slot, didn't you, underneath that bit that people popped off. And I believe that's to do with another uh, sort of RAM thing, another, you know, one of these chips. But looking at this, they haven't attached the header. So it would be possible with a bit of soldering really just to enable that. So just put in a pin header here uh, and just get or a ribbon connector and just get your own ribbon going on because it clearly lines up with this one on the board. So that could be a nice little mod. Not sure what these dip settings are from the bottom of the keyboard as well. But look at that, how the keyboard works. That's a big old industrial. I think you'd have a hard time breaking that one. So there you go. I'm going to pack it, pack it all back and uh, deal with it another time. Thank you for watching.